Welcome to Fraser 365. I'm Chris Montgomery, senior pastor of Fraser Church, and I'm excited for you to be joining us on the study of the book of Colossians. May the Lord bless and challenge you as we seek to know the Master so that we can live His mission. This is day 14 of Your New Life. Today's title is The Cost of Reconciliation. R. Kent Hughes said, The cross is the ultimate evidence that there is no length the love of God will refuse to go in effecting reconciliation. Our text today is Colossians 1, verses 19 through 20. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The book of Colossians repeatedly states that our Lord is superior and sovereign. Colossians 1.19 explains the basis for Christ's sovereignty again from another perspective. Colossians 1.19 is the apex of Paul's Christology. He declares in the clearest language that all the fullness of God was and is in Christ. In the Son, God comes to humans with all grace and truth, fully sufficient for self-revelation and redemption. To dwell carries the sense of taking up permanent residence in contrast to a temporary stay. Here, with the past tense used, the focus is on Christ's incarnation, including the whole Christ event. The fullness that dwelled within Jesus Christ is nothing other than the fullness of complete deity. The fullness of the Godhead resides in Jesus, and for that reason, he is the head of the church. Because of all that Jesus is, he can do all things. Jesus paid the ultimate price to restore us to himself. Continuing from 119, Paul explained that God's fullness dwells in Christ, and in that fullness, he reconciled all things to himself. This reconciliation was accomplished through him and through the blood of his cross. Reconciliation means reestablishing a relationship, causing the relationship to become friendly and peaceable when it had not been so. Because Christ is creator and sustainer of all things, his death on the cross provided reconciliation for all things. Jesus paid the ultimate price to restore us back into a right relationship with him. He shed his own blood so that we could be reconciled. Dennis Fulton, a former pilot with the Wings of Caring Ministry in Zaire, tells of landing a newly purchased Cessna 402 at one of his regular stops in the backcountry. As always, the villagers excitedly gathered around the plane, but this time Dennis was approached by two men carrying a live chicken. One had the bird by the feet, and the other had it by the head. And before either the chicken or Dennis knew what was happening, the fowl's head and body parted company. The man with the flopping chicken corpse began swinging it over his head, round and round, with predictable results. Dressed in a freshly pressed white shirt, Dennis was splattered with chicken blood, as were the plane and the villagers. When Dennis asked what that meant, a native explained that, for generations, the splattered blood had signified an end to suffering. To the people of Zaire, the Cessna promised hope and help of all kinds. In a graphic way, the splattered blood of that chicken signifying the end of suffering was a fitting reminder of the blood of Christ shed to end the suffering of a world caught in the grip of sin. The only reason we can be at peace with God is because of the price Jesus paid to make reconciliation possible. Consider these questions. As the fullness of God dwells in Christ, Christ wants to fully dwell in your heart and life. In what specific ways are you experiencing the fullness of Christ in your life? Spend some time confessing any sin that may be separating you from his fullness. As you think about the price Jesus paid for your reconciliation, take time out of today to privately partake of the Lord's Supper. Find some bread or cracker to represent his body and grape juice to symbolize his blood. Read the following scripture and examine your heart. Then respond by taking the symbols of his body and blood in remembrance of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-29 For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Please pray with me. Lord, we're grateful for your blood and your body. We confess that we haven't always loved you with our whole heart. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.